What's up you guys? Welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be looking at some more Isogenix trash. This is a quick video. It's only about nine minutes long. We're going to take a look at it, offer some commentary. Hey you guys! Happy, happy Wednesday. I hope you are all having a fabulous day, whether it's hump day Wednesday for you, or maybe you have today off, or maybe you're tuning in from, I don't know, your couch and you have three kids running around. Like that's a full-time gig too. So thank you for hopping on. Okay, first, first things first, probably priorities. My North Branch, Minnesota people, the Muddy Cow opened yesterday. And if you've been there, let me know. Let me know what you ordered. If you took a picture of your food, drop it in the comments. It is a new restaurant that opened like really close to us. And we're going to go try it today. I'm so excited. They have my favorite egg rolls and it's going to be so good. They have a pretzel. I'm probably guilty of this too. Has anybody noticed? And it's not just MLMers. There's a lot of people that do this and you know, I might still do this, but it, it irks me. You know that cadence kind of like sing song voice that people get into and they're like, you know what I'm talking about? If you don't know me, I'm a little obsessed with food. So I love food. I'm going to share with you guys five pitfalls of at home sales. So these are some like real truths I'm gonna come at you with you guys. You might be a little bit like, oh, what? But they are things that I didn't know when I first started doing at home sales. So by at home sales, I mean network marketing, social selling, anytime that you're a brand ambassador or an affiliate, something like that. Five things to be aware of because I guarantee if you are doing this, you are going to come close to these pitfalls, right? Or maybe you've been doing this for a while and you've experienced these and you're like, oh, I didn't realize that that was even happening. So number one, trying to get people or being salesy. So women, we tend to be very good at sales, right? We like to talk about things we love. We like to talk about where we got our lipstick from and our eyeliner and all of the good things. But it's so important, you guys, to be authentic when you're connecting with people. So many times I have people, and I love, I love my um, Pampered Chef people. If you know me, I try to support all of my friends who have home-based businesses. But I do not enjoy eating out of Tupperware. Yeah, we're going to have to talk about that part too. There is something really sad about MLMers trying to support each other financially, like buying the products. That's just money getting circulated around just so you can say that you support other boss babes in other MLMs, but it's not actually doing anything. I think it's dangerous to place expectations on people just because you're doing something because that sets them up for potentially feeling like they have to act like they like something or doing something they don't actually enjoy when it would have been a little bit more comfortable for some people just to share a post or like it or support you emotionally during your business journey, but that's for real businesses. Expecting friends and family to support you in your MLM can get pretty dicey because a lot of times your friends and family, when they tell you look out when you're joining one of these things or do your research, they mean it with the best intentions because they can see they don't have their rose colored glasses on. So they can see the MLM for what it is or maybe they already have experience and they know firsthand that this is not a good gig for you. And I've seen this before on my own Facebook when I was in an MLM. There was a group of boss babes who would purchase each other's products from each other's companies and give them a shout out post. And all that does is make you look more unreliable to your audience as an MLMer because now they're they're going to be confused. Are you selling Pampered Chef or are you selling overpriced and underwhelming health and wellness products? Big quotations around that one. A lot of the times friends and family will feel like they need to support you. And a lot of times it's because they kind of feel bad for you. But if they knew that when they purchased that product from you, the price of the product is not what you're going to be getting paid. So let's say your mom, she loves you to pieces. She buys a product because she wants to support you. Let's say it's a $30 mascara. That $30 price point is not what you're going to be getting paid, not even close in an MLM. And she probably doesn't know that. So she probably thinks she's making a big impact on your business because it's a $30 mascara. 
but that's not where you're getting at all. I'm not sure what it would be for your specific MLM, but it would be dollars, if not less than a dollar. It would be in the single digits likely that you're getting from that sale. We don't, I don't do leftovers. So it's not relevant to me um, to try and sell me on that, things like that. So when someone tells you no, like, be normal about it, right? If you wouldn't say it normally at a party or you wouldn't say it to their face, it's that's not normal, right? So don't be salesy, be genuine in connecting with people. Okay, number two, not staying true to whom you are. This can happen with keeping up with the Joneses and I know there's so many people out there that make millions of dollars in these businesses and that's great, but you guys, what's more beautiful is how many people are earning an extra $500 a month. Okay, that- Or how many people aren't. This girl, I'm not sure where she is in Isogenics, but this video has 103 views and one like. And in my experience, the people whose social media engagement looks like that probably don't have a bunch of people on their team making $500. I'm just saying because that was me. That's what's normal. That is the larger percentage of at-home sales. And, or maybe it's $1,000 a month, whatever it is. That is so beautiful. So yes, if you have big goals and dreams, like that's amazing as well. But staying true to who you are and what's important to you in your life and not letting this kind of like hustle mentality take over your life. That's something that I had to learn the hard way is I got to the point where I would be playing with my kids and feeling like I should be working. And then I'd be working and feeling like I should be with my kids. Okay. If that's you, it's a pitfall. You need to get out of it. Right. And I think a pitfall is an interesting word for it. I think if she was to say that, oh yeah, you know what? A lot of times in MLM or when you look at coaching via YouTube or the team trainings, you get a lot of mixed signals from people. And sure, you do have to decide what is right for you and what you want to take from these things, but it's very confusing. So are you supposed to participate in hustle culture or are you supposed to prioritize your family, which is probably the whole reason you got into this business, right? I think it's just mom guilt or parent guilt in general when you're doing something and you still feel like you should be doing something with your kid even though you need to fulfill your needs and wants as well so that you can turn around and be a better parent and be happier and still feel fulfilled in being your own person while being a parent. I think that's really important. So I think there's some validity in what she's saying, but it's very confusing when you're in the MLM of what concept you're supposed to grasp onto. Stay true to who you are and what is important to you. Number three is trying to build your business like someone else. There are so many different ways that you can build an at-home business, you guys. A ton of people still do in-home. Good luck doing that and not having people talk behind your back for how you do it though. Every team, every team has their own vibe in every MLM, but within every team, I guarantee there is some drama. And if you start doing things that differ from your team or the company because what you were doing wasn't working for you so you wanna try something else, best of luck. Because a lot of times you're going to get talked about, people are gonna say, oh, that's never gonna work. What is she doing? You need to do it the tried and true way. I don't know of an ethical way to do an MLM, but I would say it's less bad when people try to do it the attraction marketing way. Don't take it and run with the MLMers if you're watching this, but I think that's the lesser of two evils. Parties or garage parties through COVID or whatever it is, social distancing parties, uh, in person, belly to belly, that's great. So many people build online businesses and it- <laughs> So she's in Isogenics and she's talking about belly to belly. I thought belly to belly was just in It Works, my old company. Cause it made sense because we had those wraps and a lot of moms put them on their stomach, hoping to tighten down in front of their skin. That's why I thought we would say belly to belly, but if she's an isogenics and they don't have stuff like that. It's all 100% virtual. That's great too. Whatever floats your boat, whatever is great for you. Again, I re had to realize this one the hard way. I was trying to build like other people did and other successful people. And I, at the time, like, didn't really pivot from being just a single married woman to having kids. And when I now have kids, trying to build like single people do doesn't work. And when your mind says one thing 
and your heart says something else, it's not in alignment, you can have an identity crisis, right? And you can start self-sabotaging, you hit limiting beliefs, you start feeling, well, I can't do this business because I'm not like them. But you need to just pivot and that's- No, I tried for probably the first three years of my time in the MLM world to copy the right cat, as they would say in my business. So I would try to act like my upline, I would try to act like other uplines or people who were at the top of the company who are doing things a little bit differently. I would try to emulate them because my actual personhood was not considered brand safe. I was going out, I was partying, I had a million different jobs, I was doing a bunch of things I don't really care to talk about now, but obviously I wouldn't talk about that stuff in these MLMs. Something that I've learned over the last couple months is there are so many ways to do this that is authentic and real to you. So maybe you need- No, there's not. There's nothing authentic and real about anyone sending hate girl messages or posting 10 slides about their shake. Cause no one cares. No one cares, Karen, about all the ingredients in your shake. Most uplines will tell you not to disclose the names of whatever the product for whatever the company is. So you have to guess. So it's like, you have to reach out and ask. People will reach out and ask. People aren't stupid. And if you put the name brand right out there, they can just go look it up themselves. But if you didn't know this, I'm gonna tell you. You can buy Isogenics on Amazon. Mm -hmm. Isogenics is one of those shitty companies that screws over their representatives. And I'm sure they would fight me on that and try to say like, oh no, they're not screwing us over, that's fine. No, no, you have to see what's going on here. There are people like me who would rather just buy something on Amazon and not have somebody up my ass asking me if I liked my products, only to turn around and tell me I used them wrong or I'm gonna have to jump through hoops to get my money back. I don't wanna do that. To pause and take a step back and look at the big picture, say, how do I wanna do this? What is important to me? For me, it's family. I love putting my kids down for bed at night. I don't care if there's a team call or a big event, if I have to sacrifice my time with my kids, the answer is no. And I can still build a successful foundational business putting my family first, okay? I couldn't say that two months ago. So. This kind of growth is important. Okay, number four, treating people like numbers. And this kind of goes back to number one, but you guys, so many people have different goals. It's really important to stay connected and truthful and honest with them, regardless of whether their goals are big or small. And it's really easy for us to, when we hear someone else wanna make a lot of money, right? And then we enroll them or we get them started in our business because they're gonna make us a lot of money. Okay, we have to be careful and stay as a servant leader, okay? Because like, I would rather have five people that are consistent and hungry and have maybe their smaller goals, like who's the judge of what's big and what's small, right? Maybe their goals are big to them and I'm looking at it, I'm like, oh. What she's describing is exactly what she said not to do. Because at the end of the day, the goal is to still make money off of people in your downline. I understand it doesn't take away from their checks personally. I get how that works, but you are still making money off of their financial deficit. It doesn't matter their intention behind getting in the business. It doesn't because at the end of the day, you still want to make money off of them. And are you really going to be spending time fostering someone else's business with them if they're not making an income. If you're a real boss, babe, the answer is no, because you go where the money is and you're loving them where they're at. You only want to make 500 bucks a month, but that $500 a month would save their marriage, right? Focusing on them. I think we can all agree that financial stress can be an issue in marriages, but I think it's a bigger issue the way people communicate about the money versus the actual physical dollars and the bills that are sitting on your counter. It's about the way you communicate about it and the coming up with a game plan to handle it. Is more important how we can serve them, how we can help them, how we can lead them. What solutions do we have to offer them versus the person that comes in and says they want to be a millionaire. Like, okay, that's great but we can't forget, again, like the normal, the average people that we can help, okay? So okay, I wanna know who is joining her team and is like, I wanna be a millionaire in this business. I wanna know, cause I bet it's not a damn 
single person saying that. Carry on, girly. Oh, the last one is feeling discouraged or like you're losing your dream. So I have been in this profession for six years and I was feeling so discouraged on not making more money and not feeling like I was going anywhere. And I realized that I have been in this profession for six years and I was- Yeah, so it looks like I did hear that right. Six years. And I know you shouldn't judge a book by a cover and maybe she doesn't use Facebook a lot. I have a feeling I'm right though, that she's not that high up and she's not very successful in this business. And maybe, maybe there's some merit to what she's saying, you know, and she's just one of those people who only wants $500 a month. So it's not a biggie, but I would think even someone who's making 500 a month in any MLM would have more interaction than this, because this means that not, nobody's really seeing her post. And honestly, this video seems like something that should have been in a team call or something. I don't know why she would put this on her page. I was feeling so discouraged on not making more money and not feeling like I was- That's the correct feeling. That is the correct feeling to have after six years in an MLM. Yeah, I woke up after four. Some people don't and she is proof of that based on what I'm seeing here on her page. Going anywhere. And I realized that a lot of this had to do with the relationships that I had lost along the way. And when I started this, I was totally a complainer. I was not healthy victim mindset. She's sitting there naming reasons and putting it on herself. This is what MLMs ultimately want. They make it sound like they're going to serve you and give you the opportunity to give you everything you want, friendships, time freedom, financial freedom, and they put all of the responsibility on you. So they claim to give you everything you want, but it's your responsibility to go after it. It's your responsibility to put your money forward and do the work and do the self-development. And if you don't become a millionaire or whatever you deem success to be in your MLM, it ultimately falls on you. I used to be one of those people who would take all of the accountability instead of putting any blame on the business or the business model. Had a very small money map and everyone that I had surrounded myself with at that time was very similar. You know, some people they start doing at home sales and it's like they take off right away and they do one post and they have all of these people that want to join them. And then there's like, people who start below the bottom that don't have any belief in themselves, that don't have any belief in this profession and don't have any belief in the company. And it's taken me so But why do you care? If you're not seeing people as a number, why do you care what they do with their business? How much time to build that confidence in myself, build that belief in myself, build belief in our teams. And I have lost friends along the way. And it's not because I wasn't being a good friend. It's not because I wasn't offering solutions. It was because I was growing and they didn't want to grow with me. And that is- I have said that and I still feel bad about saying that when I was in the MLM. I would say things like that. I don't think I let anyone go because of the MLM. I, I, I would talk like that to make myself seem like I was going through this huge awakening and just excelling at life and you know, you gotta love people where they're at, but maybe they can't come with you on this journey. And I'm sure one day I will find those posts and we will all cringe together. But I think it would be interesting if uh, we find more stuff from this person to see if she goes into specifics on letting certain relationships go. I know a lot of times that's considered dirty laundry, but I bet you anything that MLM had something to do with it because oftentimes it does because you start to see people as if they're not coming, if they're not like excelling at the rate you're going at, then they can't come with you in life or you gotta break those friendships off because they're negative. Just because someone's right about your business being crap doesn't make them negative. Just a heads up at Blemmers. Okay. What's not okay is when you allow that loss to discourage you from your dreams. I know Alex and I have talked about this. I would love to vacation with other couples and other families. Like let's get the 12 family mansion Airbnb and you can watch the kids one night while we go out and we'll watch the kids while you go out and we'll hang out on the beach together. And then I had lost these relationships along the way and I was feeling so just hurt 
by how just selfish people can be, how unsupportive people can be. And I allowed that to take my dreams away. And now it's finally just starting to come back. Notice how she doesn't put any blame on the business model. It's other people's fault and it's her fault, but there's no responsibility on the business. In the last couple months, after taking a huge like little hiatus, but you guys, you cannot let that discourage you. You cannot let the naysayers, what other people might think of you, keep you from pursuing your dreams. This is your life. You have one life that God gave you to live and to breathe. And every single day, waking up is a gift. God has given you unique talents, unique things that get you excited that don't get other people excited. And it's important. He gave you those to use them. So how can you go out and serve people better? How can you go out and help people more today? How can you offer your solutions to more people in this world? Because people need what you have to offer. Christianity and MLMs just want you to give, 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 give. While both of those two make you huge promises and put all the blame on you when you don't get what you needed from the business or the religion. And I know you guys don't get tired of praising your Lord and Savior and all that, but oh my God, do you guys all have the same shit to say? There's no originality. There is no new take that I've heard Christians say ever. It's like, you know how you learn how to talk the talk in an MLM and Christianity? You learn how to talk the talk. I think if we're all being honest, Maybe it's just me, maybe I'm wrong here. But you go through, you know, highs and lows in your MLM, highs and lows in Christianity, and those are moments where you're starting to wake up. And you should take a minute to reflect and seek things outside of your echo chamber to compare and contrast. That's what you're supposed to do as a human. You're supposed to acquire knowledge. If you're only learning things from your echo chamber, you are not going to grow, that's not growth if you're only growing in one direction. So go tell them about it. Mwah! I hope that's helpful, you guys. Stay away from those five pitfalls. If you need any help, I'm here for you. Send me a message, like, comment, share, and have a great, amazing day. God bless. Love you. Oh my God. You know, I just, I don't like when MLMers say love you at the end because, be, because I used to say that. I don't love strangers on Facebook. Like, let's finally just be honest. I, I don't. I don't know why I ever said that. Well, I do. All right, we are going to take a look at one more. I'm not going to read the title of this one because it has her name in it. But she says, whether you're proficient at goal setting or you're a total beginner, let me share with you three tried and true tips on how to begin. Level up or master your goals for a new chapter in life. Hi. Welcome to episode three of It's New Year's Day. Happy New Year. It's 2022, which means a fresh new start. Now, you can have a fresh new start any old day. You don't have to wait till the beginning of the year, but it is a nice just turning point when you think of chapters or just dif different parts of your life. Sometimes the new year is exactly what you need to get going on your next step. Now, I'm going to talk today a little bit about goal setting. First of all, what is a goal? A goal is a part of your to-do list. And it who doesn't love a hunt who can break down and grasp at straws at basic concepts? Who doesn't know what a goal is? Who doesn't have access to Google? Those are people who might value this basic information. Everyone else, you've heard it. I've heard it. Oh, my God. It can be minor. It can be major, it can be crazy, it can be fun, it could be scary, it could be way out of your league. Like this is so customizable. This is something that anybody could do. It's not just for gym people, it's not just for people wanting to lose weight or get ahead in a job. This is for everybody. She's in isogenics, which is a health and wellness MLM. People in MLMs get roasted when they're not super fit. So if someone who's considered overweight is in this MLM and they're not sculpted and toned and gym obsessed, then they don't take it seriously and no one's gonna wanna join their business and blah, blah, blah. Now, you may not know it now because I talk a lot about goal setting, but just a couple of short years ago, I had no goals, none. Like, 
I guess I could say that I always had it in the back of my mind to do things like write a book or, you know, I'd always wanted to lose weight when I wasn't feeling my best and things like that. But I didn't sit down and like formulate them into anything more than just an idea. So that's what turns an idea into a goal. So here are some of my ways that I have turned ideas into a directional path that you can take and take it or leave it, you know, add to it or take away from it. This is, this is something that's so personal that sometimes it's kind of hard to follow somebody else's path, but we're almost two minutes in and she said a lot of words, but nothing's been said. If you get little tips and tricks, you can create it into your own very own special, uh, part of your life. So tip number one, set an intention with this goal based on how you feel. So I will use examples all throughout this and it doesn't mean that there's something I'm using or something that you're using. So we'll bring up my wanting to write a book. So I want to write a book. What is my intention with that book? Is it to enrich somebody else's life? Is it to provide some laughs? Is it to you know, bring a smile to somebody's face or, you know, something along those lines. What is the intention and how would that feel if that intention was fulfilled? So if I wanted to write a comedy book, how would it feel to know that somebody messaged me and said, say, I, I peed myself laughing so hard. Like, that'd be awesome. You know, like that's the feeling attached to that goal. Okay. So if that makes sense, Put a one in the comments. Just be like, well, I get it. One, let's, let's have a feeling attached to that intention. Tip number two, set a deadline. Now, deadlines can be scary. They can be like hugely. If you're a boss, babe, and you set a deadline and you don't meet that deadline, quit. <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't want to uproot your livelihood. Maybe you have something else backed up, but ultimately get out almost push you in the opposite direction but if you don't if you don't give yourself a measurable time frame sometimes it never gets done and sometimes you don't know in the beginning if that time frame is realistic or not so you have to give yourself something to work off of so we'll keep using this book idea right if I am so busy right now because I have a three-year-old and a ten-year-old and all this other stuff and a business and all these things is one year a time frame that I can work with? Maybe, maybe not. What if I give myself five years? Let's see. Ah, oh, like think of that. Is that more manageable? Maybe, maybe not. Like you've just got to give yourself a timeline. And then if, if that big timeline is like scary, or if this goal is really big, I want you to focus on, I don't want to make it seem like I don't believe she believes what she's saying. I think she does truly feel something for the words that she's saying, but it's so tired. I don't know how you can follow these boss babes and still be inspired after like 30 days of seeing them say the same things over and over again. Tip number three, and this can also be done with smaller goals. Break that big goal into smaller chunks, like have it. And so I want to write a book. How long, if I give myself five years, so two and a half years from now, half of my book is written. Okay. And then, you know, one year from now, like how much can I have written of that book? And then even break it down by month. Can I write a chapter a month? Can I write a chapter every two months? Break that big, huge goal into down into smaller bite sized bits. Maybe it's a financial goal that you have. I want to, you know, have a million dollars in my bank account in 10 years. Okay. So in five years, in two and a half years, in one year, like break that down. How much do you need to save this month? So the you can have your goals. That doesn't mean you're going to meet them. And if you're in an MLM, it is not your fault. If the way it's set up is designed to fail, you're supposed to fail in an MLM. It is not designed for you to succeed and you shouldn't take that as a challenge. You should see that as a red flag. That is the correct way to see it. With and, and dream a little bit, you guys. Like, give yourself the opportunity to look at some things that 
you maybe have never put more thought into except to just say that one day, someday, you know, when the timing is right, well, give yourself, give yourself a time, give yourself a feeling attached to it, give yourself some time and give your, and break it down into smaller bite-sized bits. For more content like this, please continue to follow me because I love talking about stuff like this because I've been there, I've been through the trenches and I love to help other people. So put in the comments what something you're working on is because accountability is super important. And even if like the time or the bits and chunks don't align with what you think it is on your first try, that's okay. Reevaluate it next time. It's okay. And you're okay. You're entitled to change your mind too. Maybe I don't want to write it. Spoiler alert, there's only one comment on this video and it has 60 views and five likes. Eesh. So you could follow literally any boss babe, any. You pick from any MLM and you can find this information. A book. Maybe it just didn't suit my needs that I thought it did years in the past. It's okay. It's okay. All right, you guys, have a blessed and safe New Year's, and I will be here again every Saturday. I hope that you have a fabulous week. Take care. If she's anything like me, I don't know how long she's been in, but if she's anything like how I was in the business, I bet she turned this camera off and just relaxed her face and was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> That was exhausting. It is hard to put on a show. And that's part of why I love doing YouTube now because I don't have to just sit here and smile the whole time and sound like positive poly pants because that's not who I am. Like I'm not this peppy, bubbly person all the time. I don't wanna smile constantly. I don't wanna have to, I don't wanna turn my tone up so that I sound more positive. I wanna sound like myself. And however that sounds is fine with me because I am so sick of pretending to be someone else. I don't have the energy for it anymore. And I hope that she figures that out too. And she might be a positive person. Some people are like that. Some people are just happy and peppy and positive all the time. But I know from firsthand experience that she's probably fucking exhausted. If you've been enjoying my content so far, please hit the subscribe button, leave me a comment below and let me know how you feel about these videos. Do you guys see what I'm saying? Do you feel inspired by this kind of stuff or is it just me? Cause I feel like it can't just be me, right? Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.